So far this week, we've explored the structure and function of membranous epithelium. Just a reminder that membranous epithelium covers and lines the external surface of our body and lines all internal cavities, organs, tubes and passageways. However, there's another type of epithelium present in our body known as glandular epithelium or more simply, glands. Glands are clusters of epithelial cells that produce secretions. There are two types of glands found within the human body, endocrine and exocrine glands. Endocrine glands release their secretion into the bloodstream where it's transported to other parts of the body. Examples of endocrine glands include the thyroid and adrenal glands. Exocrine glands release their secretions into ducts, which empty onto a surface or into a cavity. For example, the pancreas secretes digestive enzymes that are emptied into the small intestine. In this presentation, we're going to investigate the structure and function of exocrine glands in more detail. Exocrine glands can be unicellular or made up of just one cell, or they can be multicellular, made up of lots of cells. Examples of unicellular glands are the individual goblet cells that are found throughout the respiratory and digestive tracts. Multicellular glands, such as sweat glands, are formed by clusters of secretory cells. Multicellular glands can be classified based on the shape of their duct. If there's one long straight duct, we call it a simple gland. However, if the duct is branched, we call it a compound gland. Multicellular glands can also be classified based on the cluster of their secretory cells. They can be tubular or acinar or both. Tubular glands, like the name suggests, are shaped like a tube. Acina comes from the word acinus, which is Latin for berry, and they are berry or sac shape. So simple acinar glands look a bit like individual grapes, while compound acinar glands look like bunches of grapes, with the stalks representing the compound ducts. If the gland is a mixed gland and contains both tubes and sacs, we call it a tubulo acinar gland. Glands can also be classified based on the types of secretion they produce. Serous glands produce a watery secretion. Sweat glands are an example of serous glands and the watery secretion that they produce evaporates onto the skin's surface to keep our bodies cool. In the nasal cavity, however, mucous glands produce a thick slimy mucus and this mucus traps dust and bacteria and prevents them from travelling down into the lungs. We also have mixed glands which are combinations of both mucus and serous secretions and they produce a combination of both. The three pairs of salivary glands which are found in our mouths are really good examples of serous, mucus and mixed glands. The mucus released helps to lubricate the food, whilst the serous secretions contain enzymes which start chemical digestion in your mouth. Glands can also be classified on the way that they secrete. We have merocrine secretion, apocrine secretion and holocrine secretion. In merocrine secretion, the product is released from secretory vesicles via exocytosis. Most glandular secretion in the body occurs this way. This is how sweat is released onto the skin. In apocrine secretion, a portion of the cytoplasm containing the secretion is released. Milk production in the breast involves apocrine secretion. And finally, in holocrine secretion, the entire cell becomes so packed with secretion that it bursts. This releases the secretion, but also kills the cell at the same time. The sebaceous glands in skin release sebum or oil via holocrine secretion. So in summary, exocrine glands can be classified as unicellular or multicellular, simple or compound, tubular or acinar or both, tubulo acinar, serous, mucus or mixed, and either merocrine apocrine or holocrine secretion.